Hey guys, if you also want to play the latest Guardians of the Galaxy game on your Ryzen APU system with integrated Vega graphics, but you are unable to launch the game due to this D3D12 no suitable adapter found error, then this video will help you fix this problem forever. A point to be noted, that all the steps shown in this video are only valid for the Ryzen processors or Ryzen APUs with onboard integrated RAID on Vega graphics. So if you game on a system built with a Ryzen APU with an integrated onboard GPU only, but facing this issue while launching Guardians of the Galaxy, then don't worry, you will get the solution to the problem here. Another important thing guys, your Ryzen APU system should have a minimum 16GB RAM, running in dual channel mode. So if you're only having a single 8GB RAM running on your system either in single channel or dual channel, then the very first task for you is to upgrade your RAM to 16GB dual memory. Step 1. Make sure your AMD graphics drivers are updated to the latest version. For this, go to AMD's website, click on Drivers and Solutions and choose your spec to download the latest version. Or if you already have any of the previous on Adrenaline Drivers versions installed, then right click on your desktop screen and click on AMD Software Adrenaline Edition, and from the right hand side, click on Check for Updates. And if there's an update available, then you will get a download prompt there. Click on the download option to get the latest version of AMD Adrenaline software. For the time being, I am currently not updating the graphics drivers as it would interrupt the making of this video, but don't forget to update the GPU drivers first. Now after updating the drivers, let's go to the second step. Step 2. In the second step, we need to increase the VRAM of the integrated Vega GPU of your Ryzen processors and tweak all other required features. Since these onboard integrated GPUs use the system's physical RAM as its VRAM or video RAM, we can tweak the capacity of our VRAM. By default, we only get 2GB allotted from our system main memory or system RAM, and the rest 13.9GB can be used as our primary memory or system RAM, as you can see here. Now, to increase the GPU's VRAM, go to the BIOS of your system. For this, simply restart your Windows PC. After a few seconds, you will come across the logo of your motherboard's brand. At that very moment, just keep pressing any of the keys displayed on your screen below. As for my system, it is showing me to press the Dell key or the F2 key to enter the BIOS settings. After entering into the BIOS, you will come across this type of interface. Now the user interface of BIOS differs from other boards one manufacturer to others. I am currently using a SUS Prime B450MK motherboard. So the location of the settings may vary according to the brands. The name of the settings would remain almost identical but may locate at different places. So if you cannot find any of the settings, then make sure to visit the official website of your motherboard that you are using, to get the user interface guide. Now after entering into the BIOS interface, make sure that the Ray Size Bar feature is enabled or turned on, as it will allow the GPU's VRAM to exceed above 2 GB, that is, 3 GB, 4 GB, depending upon the capacity of your system's physical RAM. Go to the Advanced Settings mode. Go to the AI Tweaker tab. Make sure that the DOCP or the XMP profile is enabled as it ensures that your system RAM runs at its full speed. Then go to the Advanced tab and click on the NB Configuration option. Here, you will get an option called UMA Frame Buffer Size. This is the total memory used by Ryzen's onboard integrated Vega Graph. By default, you may get the set to auto, due to which the system can only use up to 2 GB of VRAM and not more than that. Click on here and set it to 3G, that means 3 GB. If you are using 32 GB dual channel RAM in case, then you can choose 4G, that is 4 GB. But if you're on 16 gigs dual channel system, then let the UMA buffer size be 3 GB and don't exceed beyond that as it will create various system instabilities. After all these tweaks and settings, save all these settings, exit the BIOS and boot to the Windows operating system. After that, if you pay a visit either to the AMD Adrenaline Control Panel or the Task Manager, or both, you can see that the capacity of the GPU's VRAM has been increased from 2GB to 3GB. 
and the capacity of our system RAM has also reduced from 13.9 GB to 12.9 GB. After increasing the VRAM, don't forget to reset the shader cache of all your games and applications, as it will enable the games and apps to use the full potential of the GPU VRAM. For this, go to the Raid on Settings from the Raid on Adrenaline Control Panel, go to the Graphics tab, scroll down and head to Advanced Settings, and go to the last option and click on Reset Shader Cache. Also, don't forget to clear the temporary files from your system and finally restart your system when now your PC is ready with a little performance boost, and that is without overclocking. Now all of your games will run with a little bit of more FPS and reduced lags, due to the increased VRAM. Step 3. Now open the store from where you have got the Guardians of the Galaxy game, launch the game and after loading, you can now see the launcher settings of the game, tweak your settings as low as possible and set AMD FSR to performance for max FPS, now click on the play option and boom, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy game has been launched successfully, so guys, you can now play Guardians of the Galaxy on your Ryzen APU system with integrated onboard Vega graphics. This game is very demanding and it officially doesn't support onboard Vega graphics, but somehow you can manage to play this game at the lowest possible settings, because something is better than nothing. But if you are using a normal AMD processor with no integrated GPU, or even an Intel CPU, with an external graphics card like a GT710, or any other discrete GPU which does not support DirectX 12 or so, then unfortunately you have to change your graphics card since we cannot change the VRAM of a discrete graphics card or GPU. All the external or discrete graphics cards have a physical VRAM. Unlike those onboard integrated graphics, which uses the VRAM virtually from the system's physical RAM, so you can successfully launch the Guardians of the Galaxy game on a Ryzen APU since we can change the VRAM of its integrated onboard graphics. But if I come across any solution to somehow at least launch the game on a non-Ryzen build with an external GPU, then I will surely make a video regarding it. Another important thing guys, you will face several FPS drops and quality degradation while running this game on Ryzen APUs, as the game requires DirectX 12 feature level 12.12, which is one of its minimum requirements. And Raid on Vega graphics also supports DirectX 12, but only up to feature level 12.1, and the lack of DirectX 11 support in the game is the problem here. So guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much guys for watching the video, wishing you all a very great time ahead, and I will see you in this video or on our channel.